Hello and welcome back to my channel, I'm Cypher and in today's video I'm going to show you how I built RF Clown, a PLE jammer. The reason I decided to create RF Clown is simple. Over the past few months, I've seen many similar projects in the community, but most of them are closed source. And if you know me, you know I'm not a big fan of closed source projects. That's why I am excited to introduce RF Clown. As always, all the resources and files for this project are available on my GitHub, just like with my previous projects. We will also take a moment to talk about another bugs, so stick around for that. By the way, if you like to support my work, you can subscribe to my Patreon, but even subscribing to my YouTube channel and sharing this video goes a long way. Let's dive in. Let's start with the breadboard version. This allows us to test the code and makes it easier for anyone who doesn't want the hassle of printing the PCBI design or doing soldering. With this setup, you can explore the project, tweak the code, and see how the changes affect the results. For the LED indicator, I used a NeoPixel to show which mode we are in. Whether it's PLE or classic Bluetooth, this gives you a quick visual cue while testing. Now, for those wondering, PLE stands for Bluetooth Low Energy, which is what most modern devices like smartwatches use these days. Classic Bluetooth, on the other hand, is still widely used in devices like Bluetooth speakers, although it really depends on the brand and the use cases. For communication, we have two NRF24 modules. I connected one to the VSPI bus and the other to the HSPI bus of the ESP32. This setup allows both modules to operate independently, giving us the ability to handle multiple frequencies or tasks simultaneously. And finally, at the heart, we have ESP32, which ties everything together and runs the show. Let's test the code with our prototype and see the result. First, I analyzed it using the NRF box, and as you can see, after activating RF Clown, the selected channels show a spike in traffic. This high traffic can disrupt communication for other BLE or Bluetooth devices, making them either stop working completely or work only partially. Do you notice that spike on channel 1 when I deactivate RF Clown? That was actually a bug in the earlier version of the code, but I fixed it for you in the current version on GitHub. Originally, I set the channel to 0 during the activation, but now I use the power down function, which is much better solution. Next, I tested the prototype with this Bluetooth module. In theory, RF Clown should disrupt the communication between the module and my phone. Let's see how it performs. This video is sponsored by GLCPCB. If you're looking to bring your electronics project to life, look no further than GLCPCB. GLCPCB offers it all. EDA software for seamless design, high quality PCB manufacturing, extensive component sourcing, precise stencil service, and complete PCBA assembly. With fast turnout times and affordable pricing, GLCPCB is perfect for everyone from hobbyists to professionals. Simply head over to glcpcb.com, upload your PCB design files, select your preferences, and your custom PCBs are on their way to you in no time. Sign up using the link in the description to get $60 new user coupon. And now back to the video. Well, it's not perfect, but it's working. The stability could definitely improve. Now let's test how it affects my wireless keyboard. RF Clown needs its own PCB, so I went ahead and designed one. Let's jump into the soldering process. Don't worry, I'll keep this part quick and simple, because I know some of you might zone out during this part of my videos. 
First up, I used a CP2102 so we can directly program the ESP32 without any hassle. Next, there is the LF33, a voltage regulator that provides the 3.3 volt we need for the circuit. To make RF Clown portable, I added a TP4056 which handles charging for the lithium battery. Finally, we have the key components, the ESP32, NRF24 modules, a NeoPixel LED to indicate modes, and a macro switch to control those modes, as I demonstrated earlier. Of course, I initially connected the macro switch to a GPIO without the internal pull-up resistor, but after a quick fix, we are back on track. To ensure everything was working perfectly, after soldering, I tested the RF clown with the NRFox analyzer, and everything checks out just fine. Speaking of NRFbox, I've released a new version on its GitHub repository. All functions including the BLE jammer and others are now stable. You will find all the relevant links in the video description below. And that's it for this video. RF Clown is complete and fully functional. I'll see you in the comments section.